In our first story, Information Minister Kujo Ponkrumah has disclosed government has created 145,000 jobs over the last three months. The minority in recent times, they've blamed the Kufado administration's bad policies for massive job losses on the market. But speaking with Evans Mensa on PM Express, Mr. Ponkrumah said government has so far created more jobs than the losses recorded. You had NAPCO about 100,000, which we're just about to um, inaugurate this October. Um, about another 20,000 for afforestation, over 1,049 for local government, 2,700 agric extension officers, 3,527 security personnel, 4,000 police recruits, financial clearance has been given, 9,572 educational workers, also with the uh, implementation of double track, and about 24,033 health workers. If you put this together, it's about 145,000 jobs. Over what period? Over this last two, three months, that has, uh, as I've been checking, how much financial clearance, and this is financial clearance, it's expected to happen so before this year. From the oh, finance yes. Check from the finance ministry. But here's my point. When you run an economy over eight years where, for example, about five million people are unemployed, when you create even 150,000 jobs, though you've taken 150,000 people out of unemployment, you will still find over maybe four point something million still crying for jobs. We acknowledge that and we are committed to dealing with that. But let it not be said that nothing has been done. That's well, also on the program, the ranking member on the Finance Committee and a former Deputy Finance Minister, Kissel Artiforsen, disagrees. You see, we need to remind this government that a job loss of a breadwinner in any household causes a hardship, social economic hardship, for a minimum of five people in the Ghanaian economy. Out of the media analysis alone, I have recorded, reported 115,000 job losses. Well, I can verify that. In the, in the last 18 months. I can, I can give you evidence. I mean, most of them are from your own website. I mean, I just sat down one evening. Over the last 15 months? The, the last 18 months. So I listed all of them. I'm going to go to lay off 1,700 uh, workers. Did you say to lay off? Yes, and it says it, about 1,500 workers of the mining giant are rendered jobless. The banks that recently collapsed. Yeah. Beige staff dismissed. So government should have collapsed out of the banks? Workers. No, I'm, I'm, I'm building a point. Yeah. I'm building a point. You see, if you can allow me, just five no minutes. Problem, no problem, no problem. So I'm saying, based on this, I have recorded uh, 115,000 job, job losses. You heard the nurses screaming and shouting of... But, but they can't do everybody. No, no, no. I don't know of a nurse who has been employed in the last two months who has gained employment. Oh, I, don't <laughs> I don't know of one. Man. I don't know of one. Unfortunately, we can never win with you. You will never see anything good happening in this economy. I just have like five seconds to yes. wrap up. Okay, so for me, yeah, this is a government that has seen policies failing. Like which ones? I've, I've enumerated okay. a number of them. Okay. Policies failing. My point is that I can conclude that all of these policies, can I say that they are useless policies? No, of course not. Can I say that? Of course not. And so therefore, can I tag the government useless? Of course not. Is that the position? Okay. That now, the lawyers for former Cocoa Bot CEO, Dr. Stephen Opuni, have told an Accra High Court that cocoa farmers who use Lithovit Folia, a fertilizer approved for use by Cocoa Bot, reported it induced crop growth as well as increased yield. The efficacy of the fertilizer has been questioned by state prosecutors in the case in which Dr. Opuni is charged with causing financial loss to the state in the award of the fertilizer contract to businessman Seidu Agongo. Dr. Opuni's lawyers, however, maintain the fertilizers have been useful to farmers. There is more in this report. The state's first witness, Dr. Franklin Menu Amwa, who is the executive director of the Cocoa Research Institute of Ghana, had earlier told the court the fertilizer wasn't tested on matured plants as was required. He explained this was due to a directive from then Cocoa Board boss, Dr. Opuni, who asked for approval of the fertilizers. Dr. Menu Amwa was on Monday cross-examined by lead counsel for Dr. Opuni, Samuel Kujo. Mr. Kujo insisted the Cocoa Health and Extension Division a wing of cocoa board that interacted with farmers had captured in its report that farmers were satisfied with the fertilizer. 
He also confronted Dr. Amwa with his witness statements given by the Economic and Organized Crime Office, in which he reiterated head of CHED Dr. Francis Barnes' views that the reports on the fertilizer use were positive. Dr. Amwa disagreed with this assertion. He told the court the views of CHED could not be the basis for a renewal of a certificate of a fertilizer. He further stated that his reference to reports of fertilizer's efficacy was simply a repetition of what Dr. Ba told the current government's transition team that dealt with issues relating to cocoa board. Dr. Amwa argued that Cocoa Research Institute that is responsible for testing fertilizer and getting responses from farmers on its effectiveness. The survey conducted by Chair Dr. Amwa maintained is for consumption of its management, while that of Creek will determine whether a chemical should be accepted for renewal or not. Hearing of the case resumes on October 10. Now let's go to the Ashanti region and the region's police command has denied reports a 52-year-old man arrested for possessing a substance believed to be marijuana died in police cells. Deputy Public Relations Officer Corporal Prince Dobache says Boazan Bayoyelen had been remanded into custody by the court and was due to reappear today. The suspect, according to him, however, felt sick and was rushed to the Tafo Government Hospital where he died. The uh, deceased was arrested together with four other suspects uh, for the offense of possessing narcotic drugs. And they were put before court and were duly remanded into police custody to reappear today. Uh, it is unfortunate that uh, we lost him, but the death did not occur in the police custody. While in custody, he fell sick, and uh, the attention of the police was drawn to that. He was rushed to the Tafo Government Hospital, and while receiving treatment, he died. So it is not correct to say that he died in police custody. And that is equally not true. The disease was not beaten. And uh, as we, we know, this is a, an unnatural death, and uh, by law, there will be inquest into that death. And so, uh, post-mortem reports will provide the true uh, cause of death. So, um, what I can say is that let us wait and get that professional information so as to know whether it was true that the police assaulted the disease before his passing. But there are concerns about what some members of the public find being a worrying trend of suspect dying in police cells. The death of a suspected armed robber, for example, Collins Menz, arrested at Tepa, also in the Ashanti region, is the most recent until the last one occurred at Moshizongo. The command, however, says it considered these deaths as isolated cases rather than a trend. Member of Parliament for Minsha North led a team to calm tempers as tension mounted at Moshi Zongo following the death of the 52-year-old man. Corporal Dugbache again warned residents to desist from going against the law over these deaths. It is uh, unfortunate to have that consideration. The death of someone who is in the hands of police it's not a desire that any police officer has. It was an unfortunate incident which we sympathize with. And uh, we would not say because this thing has happened, so it means it is a trend. Uh, I don't know the data that is available to prove that it is a trend anyway. But what I can say is that this is an isolated case and uh, it is unfortunate. However, uh, investigation or inquest will be conducted into it for us to know the real cause of the death of our brother. Meanwhile, the command would wish to seize the opportunity to caution the youth who are taking the law into their own hands by resorting to acts of violence to desist from such acts. Uh, Ghana is a country of laws 
and uh, anybody who is found culpable with any act of hooliganism or riotous activity would be dealt with. So the youth should desist from such acts and uh, expect that the laws of the land would work. Now before we go, Armed Forces Senior Technical School has made it to the semi-finals of the Love FM High School debate after defeating St. Monica's Senior High School. Now, the once again all-female contest saw Armed Forces speak for the motion, Mixed Halls, a remedy for indiscipline on campuses, which St. Monica's opposed. One man who didn't blink throughout the entire proceedings was Quissy Debra, and here's what he reports. The barracks ladies caused an earlier upset to establish themselves as a force to reckon with by eliminating Premper College. Occultism and hooliganisms formed basis for argument by armed forces. Make sense of our hubs for decency and discipline. The check. According to a recent survey by Ian Doctor, which was posted on the Ghana web on the 10th of October 2017, the first three halls noted for notoriety are all single male halls, especially Katanga, who without competition occupies the first position, followed by the Vandals and Castle students. And students of these halls feel proud of this negative status. Virtually some sort of defense mechanism to protect and guard against themselves these hoodlums. And as a tribe knowledge, the Commonwealth home almost always invades the territory of Mensa Sabah home. The check a similar situation befell on Guaho in the UCC when Conti boys, when Conti boys moved from Kumasi to UCC for a ritual to be performed and ended up attacking them. Which situation got one student stabbed and eventually paralyzed. St. Monica's were of the view universities are hiding behind lack of infrastructure to implement such policies. These differences can also extend to their new differences one of the sexes. Here in it's an all-girls institution. Secondly, the chair. My opponents may try to argue that these halls should be changed due to so much conflict between them. But if this is between boys, what do you think will happen when girls are included? In our society, boys are not shy of girls and will not measure just because a little or more girls are added into their halls. In fact, these boys will try and intimidate their girls, making them feel inferior. While there are a group of people, there will always be indiscipline. Whether mixed or single sex holes, you will always find in the state. Call 61 for armed forces and 57. <laughs> In one of the closest decisions in the contest, armed forces backed 225 points against 223 for St. Monica's. Is an action that results in Earlier, current presidential debate champions Ken UST Senior High stumbled against the Pass Senior High. The bone of contention was whether or not beauty pageants are a waste of resources. Tepa SHS who face a Pukwar school, whilst Tia Media take on armed forces in the semi finals. Reporting for Joy News, Kwesi Debra. Well, testing all the, all the minds there, but uh, mm. looks more like a memorization as we've <laughs> always been taught <laughs> back in school. And uh, uh, Pedro, that's the state of our education. Indeed, what a pity. <laughs> but of course, uh, I, I, I should commend these young ones for having yeah. the boldness to stand mm. up and. And, uh, and seek to debate each other yeah. in that way. Um, it would be nice to see them exert their, their own uh, original ideas. Yeah, uh, Just, that is thinking the on their feet, right? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. All right, well, uh, there's more uh, in the Love FM uh, schools debate. But right now, though, it's time for us to bring you all the headlines from the newspapers, and it's right after this. Do stay on.